to buy a ticket because of the trailer. So I hope the movie is as good as the trailer. <laughs> Let's give Minister Dunnett a hand. <laughs> Come on, Ed. Years and years and years ago, I hope we welcomed you. If not, you're welcome. Take a seat, make yourself at home. It's BG time. Amen. Amen. I like that. It's BG time. Amen. Amen. Um, I remember years and years and years, gosh, time passes fast. The first time somebody let me do something in the pulpit, and I was scared to death. I don't think he was, but. I'm I was nervous, I was sweaty, and all I was doing was introducing the, I think it was the mother of the church or somebody, and I was just, you know, um, getting up here is not as easy. Our job is to make it look easy. His job was to make it look easy, but it's not easy. Amen. 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 Because if you care about what you're doing, then it's not easy. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> when I was a young girl, and most of y'all know I've been in, I was in the world of entertainment. And Melba Moore is my godmother. But um, I remember when my mom took us backstage after a show where Sammy Davis Jr., young people don't know who the heck I'm talking about, was the, was the feature. And we, my sister and I were just like, you know, we got to meet Sammy Davis Jr. And I think I asked, because that's my personality, I said, were you scared? Were you nervous? And he said, yes, and when I stop being nervous or scared, I'll quit. Mm -hmm. And I never forgot that. If you care about what you're doing, yeah. you kind of go at it like, Lord, you got to help me do this thing now. Amen? Amen. Well, we've been talking about faith yeah. and trust, yeah. okay? And we, we learned that in order to have faith, you got to be in love with God. And if you're really in love with God, you got to trust God. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of falls together. Yeah. And then we're going to go to, and this Brown, could you go back there? There's a sheet. I hope I printed it out for the board. And I apologize to you guys. Um, Proverbs 29, 18. You know, it's funny how you progress. There was a time I wouldn't even thought about, oh, the scriptures need to be given to the board, and Bishop and I are trying more and more to go to the next level of the vision. Amen. And then Amen. eventually we'll be given the computer people and the sound and video people. Wow, that sounds amazing to me. Um, I remember when I was sound, there was no video, but I was sound. And to come from that to sound and video and computers, what a mighty God we serve. Amen. 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 And we haven't seen nothing yet. Right. I said, we haven't Amen. seen nothing Amen. yet. Amen. Amen. Uh, this scripture is where we're going at. Where there is no revelation, God, I like that. People cast off restraint. But blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction. That, that, um, try to King James, but remember that part where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint. Amen? Amen. And then I want to go to where there's no vision, the people perish. Okay? And that should be, try King James. But where there is no revelation, people, it wasn't printed out. Amen. Oh, people, thank you so much. People, okay? So, King James Version says where there is no vision. So we see from that that revelation comes from vision. And without vision, we all should know this scripture, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law is happy. The law is vision. Amen? So in order, amen? Y'all can speak up, it's Bible study. Um, if you don't, if you don't get a revelation from revelation and vision are wrapped up together, Amen. and it is imperative that you have a vision. And one of the things I've noticed in these last and evil days is ministries have lost vision. My God, my God, yes. Oh, 
So what they do is copy somebody else's vision. Uh -huh. I remember, you know this to me, I remember when we only used the word church for a church. So it could be St. Paul's Church of God in Christ. Um, uh, Jesus Cool JC Church. It was, it was always church. And okay. then the word church came up. I remember that time. I've been saved since 1970. So the word church came into existence. Um, our Caucasian sisters and brothers got it before us African Americans got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, we get sometimes no bitch gets stuck. Just the way we done it. Well, back then, Baptist denomination was the big thing. Yeah. Yeah. To say you were non-denominational, mm. you, you were against God and everything. Mm. Okay? Uh, okay? You were either Baptist or you were Church God in Christ or Cool JC, Jesus only. You know, you must be in a denomination. Yeah. And when words can have Hagen, Kenneth Copeland, those great men of God started preaching. Uh, it was a whole new way because they really didn't, they taught preach like Bishop and I do. They not confirming that that's why we do it. God just created this. This church, every ministry that is of God has its own personality. Amen. Amen. Okay? Yeah. So we teach preach. Because we want it with all that getting, get understanding, you know. And, and the beginning of this church, this ministry, because when God revealed to us, you're the church. Amen. You know, I mean, it's okay. It's no sin if you say, I go to BG Church. But really, you go to ministry. Right, right. You're bringing the church right. to ministry. Right. And, and there's no such thing as going to you. You're kind of stuck with you. That's with your right. Right. So you're not going to church. You're going to ministry. And the word ministry means to serve, to work. Amen. So you come here like you go to school. You come here to learn and to grow and to change. Amen. Through and from the word of God. That's right. The Amen. praise and the worship preps you. Uh, when I lived, God has a sense of humor. Y'all know I came here from Brooklyn, New York, and uh, ended up in Emporia. I don't know why he didn't me first in Richmond, but I must have had a lot of stuff they needed to slow down. So he put me in a very, very, very slow place. And they had wells, which was interesting. I've never seen one in my life. And they said, you gotta prime the pump. And I said, okay, where is it? What do I buy? <laughs> and, and they laughed at me just like that because I'm a city girl I'm basically still a city girl at heart I'm a little country in a little city and a little rock and roll um, I'm a beef stew all of a, I'm a mutt all of it's right here um, raised Catholic and then became born again I'm a little bit of everything um, and so when they told me I had to prime the pump, I, was, I had no idea. And, and what it was was you want to build up your muscles, go out there and prime the pump. Yeah. And uh, when they explained to me that air will get in the line. Yeah. Something like when they turn your water off, I'm sure y'all don't know nothing about that. You know, when you don't pay, and I'm sure y'all don't know nothing about it. I do know a little bit. But uh, when they turn your water off, when they turn it back on because you gave that money, it will spit. It's got an air in the line. Well, when the well hasn't been used for a while, you got to prime it. And that's just going up and down. And I'm looking at them going, okay, how long does this take? Where's the button? You know, we need to push the button. And of course, there was no button. So priming the pump before the word is praise and worship. Amen. Amen. And that's why it is important. And it's in the Bible. Both are in the Bible. Amen? Amen. 
Amen? Amen. Amen. So, you come to ministry to prime your palm and to grow and to change. Amen. That is the reason why, and there's more power the more of us come together. Right. One put a thousand, two put ten thousand. So imagine, you know, um, we are stuck in a traditional mindset of Sunday, but you do not have to have service on Sunday. Uh, this, according to the Hebraic calendar, is Saturday. Okay, um, and a denomination came up out of that Seventh Day Adventist. Yeah, um, right. We are under the Gregorian calendar. Okay? That's the calendar America uses, the Gregorian calendar. But the real teller of time, the best we can, is the Hebraic calendar. Okay? And according to that calendar, Saturday would be the Lord's Day. So, worshiping Sunday is kind of off. And the other thing is, and then we're going to get in a little deeper. The other thing is that when Jesus was on earth, because he came, he said, every day is the Lord's day. Amen. So if we wanted to make Tuesday our type of Sunday service, that would be fine. Thank you, Lord. The wisdom is that many people would fight against it. Because they have been taught, and, and I was taught that, to go to church on Sunday. Of course, back then we didn't know. If you're born again, you're already in church. And it's okay that Sunday is, or whatever day, is the main day. Okay, But we need to remember, every day is the Lord's day. Amen. Okay, so, you know, you don't know, act one way on Sunday, and then act another way Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You don't do that Amen. because every day belongs to the Lord. Amen. And then whatever your hands find to do, you're supposed Amen. to be doing it as unto the Lord. Do you, are y'all following me? Amen. Are you sure now you follow? Amen. Okay. So, where there is no revelation, where there is no vision, the people perish. You, a, a ministry, a business, uh, take our school, and it's everybody's school that's a member here. It belongs to the ministry. Amen. It is part of the vision of this ministry Amen. that God gave through revelation. Uh -huh. What was the revelation? That the school systems of this country 20 years ago were going down the tubes. And obviously it wasn't as bad as it is now. But God gave a revelation to the leaders of this ministry that a school was needed because he knew what the enemy was going to do to the school system. Once pr Hello? Amen. Once prayer was ripped out, yeah, yes. oh, yeah. and nobody realized what would happen. Yeah. Nobody. The death, I will say, of what has happened. And um, David Myers, Joyce Myers' husband, and I have the video, and I should have pulled it. I don't know if it's up here where it is. But there's a video to show he did a timeline of what happened in this country and how we deteriorated once we took prayer out of school. Because the children that were children then are now grown and grandmas, okay? And we see, he shows abortion, uh, communities, home, everything went downhill. And that was the end of He stopped. He yeah. knew what he was doing. Yeah. Yeah. He knew what he, see we look like this, but the devil is his spirit. Uh -huh. So he's looking like that. Amen. And he'll plant a seed here, I taught y'all, that'll come up over there and bring destruction. Yeah. That's it. And if you're not listening to the Holy Spirit, by the time it come up, it's too late. You're going to have to suffer through that thing. So it's good to have vision because if Christians, and back then, Christians were saying, we're not going to get involved in politics, we're not going to get involved in government, none of that. Of course, that was wrong. 
we should have stayed involved, but we didn't. And like I said, that seed of take prayer out of school. After that, abortion became legal. So much stuff has gone wrong because those children became adults. Amen. Yeah. And now you cannot take a Bible to school at all. If you take it, you can't bring it, take it out. You will be sent home. At Christmas time, no song referring to Jesus' birth is allowed at all. At all. Go tell it on the mountains. Not allowed. Nothing is allowed. So we, we keep deteriorating and look at our country. There is no vision in America anymore. Yes. There is no vision. We, nobody knows where we're headed. Why we're doing what we're doing, it's all, it's all just... Uh, my Lord, my Lord. And that's the, the scripture said in the NIV, go back to that. There's no restraint where there is no vision. Where there's no revelation knowledge, there is no restraint. Because everybody's doing their own thing. Their own thing. Yeah. And that's what's happened if you stand back and look. In America, and it seeped into our neighborhood, to our home, and now it's in our churches, our ministries. And that's in our churches, and it's in our ministries. It's in our churches, and it, because when we talk about the vision, people reject it for their vision. And that is the vision. Amen. Amen. You will not prosper. Remember, I, I, I finished off Sunday with, until you sow into another man's vision, your vision cannot prosper. That's the word of God. Word. Amen. That's the word, okay? And so you have to be like you brilliant people are, under leaders who have vision. vision. Because without a vision, the people perish or go berserk. There's no restraint. Well, why don't we do this? And why don't we do that? And why? Because there's no leadership. And even in college, in most corporate America, they're saying we're hurting because we don't have good leadership yeah, anymore. Yeah. My Lord, my Lord. Once again, grown-ups coming out of that no more prayer in church time. So now we don't have good leadership in business and in nothing. We don't have vision, vision, vision. And what God says is, even by the scripture, uh, go back to um, King James, he gives vision to a leader. God gave vision to Moses. Amen. It was the people's job and responsibility before God to follow Moses. Amen. Instead, they had their own visions. They murmured. They complained among themselves. Amen. You have to really watch people. Yeah, Bishop yeah, says yeah. this yeah. a lot. Amen. I'm telling you that come against leadership. Yeah. You, you have got, that is a sure sign of the devil. I'm telling you. Amen. Well, I, I'm going to use me. Well, I love pastor, but that's when you leave. That's when you say, we're good to you. I got to go. Got to put a pot on it. Got to clothes in the washing machine. Yes, sir. Because you're in danger now because faith comes by hearing. Yeah. And if you're stand, you continue to stand or you're under self-aware and you're allowing that, a spirit is with it. That's right. Everything is a spirit, y'all. Right. There is nothing that we no. see naturally that one time wasn't a spirit, including us. Yeah. Yeah. Everything starts in the spirit. Right. So if you're, I don't care if it's your mama, if she's talking negatively, again, right. uh, yeah, against your leaders. She's coming against the vision. Amen. That's why the Bible says it's not good for you if they serve in grief. See, we we have to be able to hear God. Amen. 
It's going to have to have that. And so we cannot allow ourselves to be pressured or burdened down. We have to stay clean, our channel. That awesome sermon Bishop preached on transmitting. You know, we can't allow anything to get in the line. So we have to quickly give things to God and leave them there. Amen. Because we've got to hear clearly about the vision. I'll give you an example. And then you're supposed to follow the vision. Amen. See, see, the mindset of Babylon, Egypt, or the world, because that's what it is. The world is Egypt, Babylon. Okay, Babylon. You remember Babylon? That's where the three Hebrew boys got thrown into the fire. Enemies of the people of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And the world is Babylon. That's Egypt. That's right. And Trump is Pharaoh for us. Okay? I'm just trying to make it relevant uh -huh. to today. But that's, that's I'm that's telling you that's Egypt. Okay? That's Sodom and Gomorrah. That's Babylon. Amen. Okay? All out there. Okay? Yeah. Amen. And you are an alien walking through. Come on. Come on. So that's why you're not accepted and it's a constant fight. Yeah. Which I told y'all, I had ministers get that in your mind and accept it. Yeah. We are in a constant with spiritual battle. Yeah. What's that song? I plead the blood. Uh, What's the name of that song? Um, war. War. Put, make sure you have that ready. Um, we're in a spiritual battle. Bam, 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 bam. Why? Because you are not a part of the world. Amen. Egypt, Babylon, Sodom, and Gomorrah. Okay? I'm going to say homosexuality, lesbianism, it's nothing new. That's I don't even right. get upset about it. It's nothing new. Right. And and I, I love everybody. Amen. There are different kinds of love. I got to love everybody. I don't love them like I love my husband. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Or my children. But I love them. I love y'all. And I love some of y'all differently. Amen. Amen. And Amen. I'm taught on the different types of love. Okay? Amen. I love everybody. But... It's, we were riding in a truck, and I wish I had heard where it was. But the scripture for the day was about the um, world deteriorating. It's in the Old Testament. And men would do things with men that were not thought of. And women would do things with women. But see, it's nothing new. That's right. That's right. Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. They turned down his virgin daughters. Amen. For men. Amen. You know, so so we don't get upset about that. Amen. But you learn from it. God got that too. Amen. Yeah. And when God gets fed up, God gets fed up. Yeah. You know, we're supposed to love everyone. Amen. And by our love, hopefully they learn about Christ. Amen. But there is nowhere in the Bible where there were not leaders. And they were not assistant leaders. There's from 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 Moses to to Revelations. There has to be good leadership creates leaders. Amen. Okay. Good to because Bishop and I know we're not gonna be here forever. Amen. Okay? And neither are you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Okay. And this has to go on. God does not place a ministry based on one person. Remember, Joshua gets up and says, they've been moaning, sitting in the, in the wood, in the desert, moaning for 110, oh, Moses, go, what are we going to do? The vision is not held up in one person. Amen. Each person that becomes a leader has a part in that vision to carry it on. Are y'all getting this? Amen. So it is important that you play follow the leader. Not follow me, but follow the leader. Are y'all getting this? Okay, okay. Follow the leader. And what the devil does, because he is the God of division. 
Y'all didn't get that. T, I wish I had my blackboard. T H E vision. Okay? Y'all's vision. That's the devil. Division. Okay? Whereas there is no division in God, there is only the vision. And see, hello, I hope I'm not losing y'all. This came from God. Amen. Okay, let me say that again. This came from God. Amen. Okay. You have to understand. God is so awesome. Yes, he is. I knew this one. Bishop and I talked about this like 21 years ago. 22 years. And we'd be, so he'd be fishing in your town. Back then, it was hardly anybody there. And it was peaceful and quiet, not like it is now. And we would sit there, and he would fish. And I still have the journal book, so I would write it. I would write the fish. And really, at that time, you think you're just talking. You know. We talked about you 22 years ago. And we're going to have a nurse department. And we're going to have a Sunday school. Uh, some of the old saints remember. You should remember. You should remember Sunday school. I don't think she remembers. You remember. 9 a.m. we were here for Sunday school. Mm -hmm. And Saturday we would go knock on doors. Most yeah, people thought we were the old witnesses. Uh, talking about the, the ministry. Talking about Jesus Christ. You remember. Yeah, Snow, Hail, Pastor Ellis B. Bias meant you was going to get your tail out. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. now so winning has changed. It's now in that camera. It's now on that computer. Wow. Isn't that amazing? We're knocking wow. on doors, wow. but we're doing it a different way. Yeah. Uh, vision. This past Saturday, we had our women's conf mini conference lunch. Yes. Luncheon. And it was awesome. Yes. It was awesome. Yes. And so much so, I, I was humbled by it. I'm going to be honest. When, women saying, How do I follow you? How? How mm -hmm. do I get connected? How mm -hmm. do I follow you? What do I need to do? And I'm going, Well, uh, you know, believe it or not, I was lost for words for a few minutes. Um, understanding, oh, now I need to build on this some more. Uh, I need to create a website. I was asked, where's the website? Well, I don't have one yet. Well, how do I get the videos you've already sent out? Uh, all these questions I wasn't prepared for. Now, the whole time the enemy was saying to me, Here's the war. Uh, anybody coming to this? You got these people out here, and you got your event planner, and you got all this stuff, and you doing all this stuff, and you got all this food, and it's all going to go in the trash. I'm saying that to you because when you're following the vision, that's what he's going to tell you. You're wasting your time. You could have been home doing da 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 da. You could have been sleeping. You could have been resting. But this scripture says, sleep on you slow. When you're building a vision, I remember when Bishop and I practically lived here. I don't know why we had a house. I really don't. We were here all night, about 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. We come here from directly from work. We would work here because people did not follow their leader. It got down to me and Bishop. That was it. And we would come down here after work, straight from work, take our work clothes with us, come here and work till 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, and be black as soot, go home, take a shower, fall across the bed. 6 o'clock, we were back up. We had to get ready to go to work. And that was for about five years. And on Sunday morning, we would come down here around four o'clock, go home, sleep for an hour, come down here, 
and sit out the kerosene heater and put pots of hot water on there to create a steam for some heat because there was no heat like you have now in the air. Like you. God is just awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He is awesome. Um, so the women's luncheon and mini conference was God's idea. It was not mine. First of all, I had to invest money that really could have went for some of my bills. But I had to choose between the bills and the conference. Um, and I chose to obey God. Amen? Amen. Amen. It was it was awesome to me, because nobody RSVP. Nobody said, I'm coming, see you there, except one person, her. And so I said, where is everybody? And of course, the devil used it. Well, nowadays, people are so busy, I guess they forgot. Because when they were coming in the door, and different cultures, and I'm going, oh really, wow. And I really want to start crying. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, you didn't make me look like some fool. And, um, but of course I had to stay focused. Then today, pops up a note from Joyce Myers, an email note from Joyce Myers. Well, the Love Life Women's Conference, she does one every year in October, and we never go because we have a school. I had something that really blessed me when I was getting ready to come out, and it was one of T.D. Jake's business meeting teachings. And the gentleman said, you know, ministries want to have 50 million things, you know. We've got the children's church, and we've got the lost souls, and we've got the divorce ministry, and we've got this, and we've got that. And but we keep making a mistake of thinking bigger is better. We keep making that mistake. And he said the best way to be successful, first you got to find out what did God call you to do. We weren't called. In the beginning of this ministry, Bishop and I thought we were going to have a great drug ministry because you know Bishop testimony. We were going to do drugs, we were going to do prison ministry, and we started and it was not successful. It wasn't. And we, it would go up and, and I had helped open a private school at another church, much, much bigger than that. And we had a member bring their child to us and she had claw marks on both sides of her face. And I said, like that, what in the world? It looked like a tiger or something. And mom said she got double bank today at school. Pastor, her, when are we going to start the school? And I said, she had to explain to me what's going on. You know, my kids grown, I'm out. And, and the book, now imagine this was 20 years ago. So imagine what's going on now. You would not believe what kids are telling us. In public school, elementary, middle, and the high, it's, it's like a minefield. Anyway, that's when we started the school. Right. And the building, it did not make sense. That's nothing. When you're following the vision of your leaders, it's not going Saturday did not make sense. And, and get this, the other vision, have outdoor movies. So. Friday is outdoor movie. Saturday is women's mini conference luncheon. And Sunday morning is church. It does not make sense. We are not a huge ministry. I'm putting a lot of work. And I don't care how big or small you are, 20% do the work of 80. That's it. Over here. And I'm pushing for that to change in this ministry. All hands on deck. And so they had to get all the chairs. We have these huge speakers. They had to get the speakers, and they're heavy. 
get them in, they had to get the chairs in, they had to get the tables in here. Those tables had dirt on them because they were outside. They had to be cleaned up. The tablecloths, the event prep planner brought, but they were, had lines and wrinkles. She said, you can't serve like this. So somebody had to go back there and iron the tablecloth. Somebody had, so we put Deaconess Williams ironing tablecloth. We put her down on the floor on her hands and knees to clean up the table. Even though nobody was going to see the legs because of the tablecloths, you still don't do that. You know, that's like people that all look nice on the outside and they got on nasty underwear, they haven't washed. Okay? Okay. So she's down on, on the floor crawling, cleaning the legs and the table. I'm doing, I don't know how many things, and we're getting all this double work. All I had to do was say, nobody responded anyway. We're not doing it. I had, and I left it up for y'all for a Sunday morning. We, I wanted the woman to walk in on white carpet. White carpet. Amen. So we got it out of storage because we've used it for other events. So, but the last event, I glued red roses on the white carpet. The roses were gone, but there were pieces of the red roses, paper roses, still stuck. Deacon Riddick is laying down on the carpet, pulling up these pieces of red because the color is pink for Saturday. I can't have these though. And I didn't ask him. When I go outside, he's doing it. We had to move the tent from the concession stand for Friday night to the tent for the ladies to stroll down on the white carpet. Amen, amen. The serving stands needed to be shined up. I don't do things halfway. That's right. Amen. Amen. So I had somebody with Windex literally just, and at any point, and I kept feeling, because I had the word playing, because I knew the devil's fighting me too hard mm -hmm. in my mind. Mm -hmm. That's a sign to you, you're doing God's will. Yeah, yeah, Okay, so I put the word on. I'll fix your hind parts. Yes, I'm going to cut you the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I'm going to cut you. You going to cut word me, I'm going to cut you. Thank so you. I got this phenomenal uh, Pastor Sean Pender playing, and all of us are just getting lifted up in the spirit. Nobody is complaining. Nobody's got an Everybody's working. I'm looking around. Everybody's working as a team. And, 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 and I'm going to have the pictures for second Saturday, Sunday. You know, and I mean, when you walked in here, it looked like we were at a hotel, at a banquet hall somewhere. Yes. It was just phenomenal. Amen. My event planner had to be at her job at 9 o'clock. She met us here at 7 a.m. To make sure the floor plan was right, this is what you need to do here, this is what you it was just phenomenal. But I, I could have stopped, but God gave me a revelation of a vision, and then I had to walk the vision. Amen. And they had to follow oh, yeah. the vision. Yeah. The vision has grown. I mean, women are telling women. And they said before they left here, didn't they? Uh, I'm going to bring Tim with me. I could have brought so and, so and so and so. People need to know about this. You're phenomenal. Oh my God, I said, well, tell my members. <laughs> yeah, tell my members. And um, today I get an email. I'm trying to walk you from trust, love, love God, trust God. Then you can have faith in God. And then God gives you revelation vision. And then you run with it. Make the vision. Put up a marker to two. That they may run. Yeah. They're breathing. Yeah. Amen. So, today I get an email. And I'm very busy. As y'all know, all of us are very busy that are here. Yes, We're getting right. ready for next Tuesday. Yeah. 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 
you know, all the parents get ready to celebrate. They're going to school. They're going to get out of my house. They're going to get out of my hair. Thank you, God, that there's a school they go to. And um, there'll be, what, eight hours? I don't have to worry. Just go. Please just go. Um, so we're very, 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 very busy. Amen. God says, read that email. And my staff has been asking me, did you see my email? No. Cause I'm, and then in the middle of it, after, today I met with Richmond Times Dispatch. They want me, they want our school to advertise in their private schools. Insert. Here, look this, and I can prove it to you, okay? Um, for the last about five years, the paper would come out with this in big insert, private schools and all these schools. So I would call Richard Thomas Spence and say, I'm serious for the last five years. How do I get in this paper? Nobody would call me back. This year, I'm at the Chesterfield Chamber luncheon that I'm a member of the Chesterfield Chamber. And this lady comes up to me and says, come, come. Uh, uh, because we're all new members, so I've been a member for about three months, okay? All new members, when you join, you have to come up and you have like 30 seconds advertised to everybody. It's about 350 businesses in the world. Who you are, what you do, and your name. So, and I, I really did something bad, but about a month ago, she came up to me and she said, take my card, take my card. And I said, okay. And um, she said, I've been trying to get in touch with you. I said, really? I said, I don't, I don't, I don't mean to offend, who are you? I'm Richmond Times Dispatch. Really? Yes, and I need to come by and talk to you. She said, okay. So, thank you. So the first time she comes, she brings me. Another gentleman, I think it was her boss or my manager with her. And they tell me, we think that you would be a great fit. Of course it's sale. What they don't know is I've been trying to get in this paper forever. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they said, we think your school would be a good fit. There is no school, my hand of God, like our school in that insert. Mm -hmm. Is there? No, ma'am. Nothing like it. Nothing like us. And nowhere near us. The one thing people keep saying to me, Minister Donnell said it. I didn't know y'all was here. People keep saying, I didn't know you was here. And the school even interviewing this year. I wish I'd know you were here two years ago. Three years ago. Where have you people been? <laughs> So God is now pulling us to the front Amen. and taking us off the back. In fact, look in my silver stand-up bar over my inbox tray, and you will see the folder with those papers in it. So, it happens, the vision is unfolding, is what I'm trying to show you, okay? The vision is unfolding. So your school is now gonna be in the Richmond Times Dispatch. Um, he is, so then I get an email today. And like I said, I really have neglected my email. And I almost missed the Richmond Times Dispatch press. Because she didn't tell me at first about the, she had to set private school insert right away, but she said, I'm from Richmond Times Bad, and I want to get with you. I didn't email her back. So the following month, when I'm at the luncheon, we do one a, one a month, she said, you didn't email me or call me, and I really think you, you need to talk to me. And I felt bad. 
And that's when we had to meet. And she told me that on the phone. She said, I want to get you in the private school in Surrey. Well, she's, she's sales, but she's also caring, and she's a Christian. Amen. Amen. So we're talking scriptures. This is 2016. That's how long I'm, I've been dealing trying to get in this faith. And what we will get is this and the description of our school. And they set this up whichever way I want it to. Amen. So now I'm praying because I want to make sure. I get it, so it attracts attention. This is two that you see right here, 2016. I saved it. She has my 2017. I want you to see I'm not making this up. Uh, there's another one. Here's 2017. What one did you have? You probably had this spring. Yes. 17. They come out in October, then it comes out again in the spring. Why now? Because you have to work the vision. Like a garden before it comes up. So you have to go through some things before the vision comes up. I'm watching the time. Amen? Amen. You've got to have one we found out. You've got to learn to love God, really love God. Yeah. Not the religious love God. Oh, yeah. I love God. Yeah. No. Yeah. And and then you trust God. You start learning about Him. And you trust, you build a trust in you for God. After you trust Him, then you can have faith in Him. Yeah. Amen. Right. You can't have faith in anybody. My husband, because I trust him. And you remember I taught you can't love and not trust. That's right. yeah. You're not in love. Most of the times you don't trust. Well, I know I've counseled so many women. And I know he cheating on me, but I love my boyfriend. You know, yeah. I my husband. But, uh, well, how do you know? Because he done already done it three or four times. But I want him back. You know, why would you want him back? Why would you want them back? You know, there's some lust in there, and there's some, I just don't want to lose. Okay? And that, that happens. I don't want you, but I don't want nobody else to have you. You know, that demon is, is in all of us, and it will come up. It will come up. You know, it does with children. Tonight, we were back there, and I was talking about something that I'm going to do for the school to prepare some, like, preserve things. And um, I gave all the little girls a pair, and they were saying, oh, it's so good. And I gave Sister Pert a pair. She wanted one. She was eating. They were, oh, and I said, y'all just write it to it. Yeah, it's good. So Jaden, I didn't give a pair to. OK? I didn't give him one. I didn't give Cliff to one. I said, this is the girls' club. So when Sister Perk says you want a bite of mine, no, I want it my own. I said, well, you won't get one. <laughs> See, that spirit is there in all of us. It's the human mind. Amen? Amen. We have to we had to write the vision and make it plain. So we started out with it on our brochures. We used to have the threefold brochures. Boy, was that a waste of money because y'all would drop them off in the parking lot, the bathroom, on the church floor. It just didn't make sense. Um, and then a lady came that we did not know. And Bishop used to go to a church with a, I call it ecumenical group of preachers, Mennonites, Quakers, Baptists, whatever. They all came together to pray and to talk. And her father was part of that group. And he told her about our ministry and showed her the brochure, and she got revelation. So she came to here with the brochure. She said, I want your permission. I'm a professional artist. I want your permission to paint the vision on canvas. And I said, Bishop said, sure. Come in and touch what you want. 
or not. And this came about. She hand did this whole thing. God was confirming his word with signs followed. We didn't know her. We didn't ask her. We didn't know what to ask her. God gave her revelation and she came and she made the vision plain. Step by step, God's confirming. He know unless you see it, you can't run with it. So for this ministry, you are reminded of the vision constantly. Amen. You have no reason not to follow it. Amen. Why aren't you following the vision? Because you're in the vision. You're in your vision. You think you have a right to your vision. Because that's what the enemy's told you. But the scripture, Jeremiah put it up 29.11, says God has a plan. God has a plan. You see, everything that you see for your life has to be somewhere in you. Amen. It has to be, to be in God's will. You've got to see if, if um, Deacon Riddick, let's say, which he doesn't have, so I'll use him. If he had, go to King James Version, that's the NIV. Um, He's got a landscaping business. Okay? He doesn't. Let's say he does. Okay? Are y'all with me or y'all sleep? Amen. Say amen. 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 That's right, Pastor. That's right. That's right. Everybody. That's right. Everybody. That's right. Okay. So, see how hard it is to get us to move as one? So, he's working his vision now by he is the best landscape person for the ministry that you've ever seen. He's going to make sure the grass is cut, the bushes are straight. He's doing his business, but he's really first, Matthew 6, 33, he's doing this vision. Amen. Okay? So, when the big building comes, guess who gets the contract to cut the grass for the church, for the school, and for the subdivision. Amen. Who gets it? Take it ready. Now, at that point, members are going to get mad. <clears throat> I've been a member of the church, and I got a landscaping business, and they didn't call me. How come they went to Brother Duty Watch business? Why did they get Deacon Riddick? Because Deacon Riddick, where he could not naturally see it, saw it, and, and sowed into the garden Amen. called God's garden. Yeah, yeah. So when the vision manifested, it was always there in the spiritual. And in due season, the Bible says, it manifests. Okay, now it's manifested. The person who, Henny Penny is my favorite book. Okay, y'all don't know Henny Penny? Yes, ma'am. Henny Penny Amen. was a chicken. Yes. A hen, I guess. Henny Penny, hen. And she had corn seeds. And she asked all the barnyard animals to help her plant the corn. Mm -hmm. And all of them had a good reason. I have to, the ducky said, I got to work the farm. And all the animals had a good reason. I read this book when I was a little girl. And it wasn't until years, years later as a Christian. Wow. And all along the way. So then when she wants to till the ground, pick up the weeds, plant the corn, each step of the way, nobody wants to be involved with anything. She gets down to hus pulling the hus the corn group. For one corn kernel, you get she get an eight corn at the minimum. Okay? And she had planted a whole 
garden of corn. So she had a lot of corn, okay? And so then she asked, is anybody willing to shuck the corn? I'm too busy. The fox, the other chickens, the donkey, you know, everybody was too busy. So then she washed, nobody wanted to help wash the corn. Nobody wanted to help cook the corn. So she grabs the corn with a beak and she's pulling it to put it over the fire. Nobody wanted to help get the logs for the fire. Nobody, everybody wanted to do their dish. Well, the corn was cooked. And she smeared butter all over the corn. And she put it on a picnic table. And it smelt up the whole barn. And every animal you could think of came to the table. <laughs> and Henny dear Penny said, when I asked you to help me till the ground, you were too busy. When I asked you to pull out the weeds to plant the corn seeds, you had better things to do. When I asked you to help me plant the corn kernels, you had things to do for your family. Each step of the way, none of you would help me plant the corn, pick the corn, shuck the corn, so you are not going to help me do the corn. Are you a barnyard animal? Or are you hen? Because that story plays out in every life, in every minute. Mm -hmm. Yes. Until you sow into another man's fish, your vision will not go up. It will stifle out. You are blessed because you have leaders who have vision. Amen. Amen. You are blessed beyond, thank you, beyond measure. Thank you. you don't have any understanding of what's going on out there. Amen. Either pastors were not called, or they've been so beat down, they've lost their vision, or they never had a vision. And I don't mean that to be me. God would not call you and not give you a vision. He will not. And you have to work that vision when nobody else will work. You have to show God no matter what. We have, Bishop and I have been in this ministry when it was freezing cold, kerosene heater, nobody in the seats, those who bring me one of those chairs, wooden chairs, and nobody believed in us. No family, no friends, no friends. We had pastors tell us we were fools. We went from this, bring me that chair. We went from no heat and kerosene heaters and every window you see from that, put that on the other side. Because you can't see all the windows now. There are windows all the way around this field. Had, had air conditioners in them. Used air conditioners that we found, we bought, we yard sale, wherever. And they, they were all in these windows. There was no heat. There was no air. Was no light. That ceiling fan is the only remembrance we have that there was a rocket of bay wire hanging down with one little 40 watt light bulb. That was the only electricity on this building. There were no plugs, there were no lights, there were no ceilings, there were no reaching for our walls, there was nothing. There was no carpet, there was no tile. And please make sure you check out that beautiful work 
that our housekeeping department did, along with the men's department and the scholarship hall was where we moved jump to. Look what God has done with the teachers. From this to this, there was an old pink drape that hung up there. Refrigerator yeah. out there, a 1940s refrigerator. You know, the rounded front and the little freezer, and the ice would be all over the outside. That was food ministry. Yeah. Now, food ministry takes up a whole house. Yes, Lord. Yeah. 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 I need you to be really excited. Because God ain't even a third of the finish yet. Amen. I believe it. Amen. Don't you get an Israelite spirit? That's what happened to the first ship of members. It was hard work. Amen. And they told me, and Bishop, we are praised. And left. They didn't. They were the barnyard animals. You're asking too much of us. And I've looked for that this past Saturday. I've looked for the, I'm looking for it. Because that spirit, I'm going to tell them, thank you for coming. But we're okay, you can go. See, I was always like that. I used to beg people to do things around. Yeah. Don't beg people. I can do it. Bishop and I will do it. Nobody else want to do it? That's fine. I'm not going to talk to you. I'm not going to fuss at you. Say that's fine. I did it Sunday. We had a lot of furniture had to get back. We moved all the furniture out to do the preschool side and a new nurse's office and a new staff lounge. All those floors had to be stripped, bone stripped, wax, six coats of wax. And now everything had to be put back. So I called all the men and the young men up and I told them what we needed. I said, but if you don't want to help, Because, see, I have heavy the pennies for you. It'll get done. Yes, the corn will be budded. Amen. The ministry is growing. Yes, it is. Thank you, Lord. We're going to have our larger building. Yes, we will. But I don't, I don't need you. Thank you wanting to be beside us and showboat. Then, I asked you when we were just planting. People perish because they have no leader protection. You have two leaders. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Amen. A Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some of you are going to be living in that subdivision. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know how it's going to No more than I knew our school would grow like it did. We started with one kid. With the kerosene heater. And a black and white TV with a coat hanger in it that we got from Salvation Army. And I bought some books from there. And some cots we got. And school was out there. And it wasn't like there was one big open space. Now it's a county, it's a classroom, it's a beautiful church lobby. Mm -hmm. We didn't Amen. see that. Amen. We saw do the will of God. Right. And I would sit with that little TV and move the antennas, try to get the TV. To show the channel 23 for PBS so the children could learn. We had one computer about six years later. Before that, I would sit out there at this big, um, was it metal, steel desk, you know, them old gray desk. I would sit out there with the kerosene heater and manually type the flyers and the church brochure. With gloves on. 
and then we would pay and go up to Kinko's and have copies. Nobody came to church. Why were we making copies? Why was I sitting in the freezing cold typing a brochure? Because I love God. We trust God. God gave us a vision. So we found, now it comes through the computer on the screen. So we have to go to website and look at the calendar and see what's going on for the church. The school has its own website and calendar. The school, you pay on a computer, tablet, on your cell phone. You can pay your tuition. Do you really think we saw all that? We saw a vision, a glimpse. And God said, now what? Work the vision while it's dead. Night's coming when no man fish. Fish. Grass always looks greener on the other side. God's going to bless my faithful stand. He would tell me, I don't want to work there. Fine, don't. I used to be, even with the teenagers, both of them, and teenagers, I made them. They go, their parents made them. You gonna come down here and work. You no, know, God showed me that gives him no glory. No glory. So my kids said, I don't want to work at the school this summer. I said, okay. For me, that's a big change, but when God said it, it grieves me when you're begging people to serve. The harvest is plentiful, the labors are few. So I stopped doing it. So she went to work for King's Dominion, and right about that time, Mr. Donnell called me. He said, get my daughter work there at the school this summer. Mm -hmm. Sure. Then Richmond City, Richmond Behavioral called. said, can we send some volunteers? I said, sure. Senior Connections said, can we send some volunteers? I said, sure. God will provide. This morning, Deacon Williams went to pick up Caleb wasn't ready. He said, I can't go get you. I've run out of time. I'm going to get down there to the school. I've got work to do. He said, Caleb called him back, and I found out the real reason he said it, lady. Because Deacon would said, Get your mom to bring it. Catch your Uber. I'm going to be down there. You're not ready. I can't come and get you. He called back and said, Do I have to be down there? Yeah. Deacon went to me, I said, no, no, nobody has to be. You don't have to be. A little while later, they said, Caleb here. I said, ask him why he's here. Why is he here? Because he can go home. He told me later, he said, the only reason I said that is because when I asked my mom to bring me, she wanted to know that I have to be here. He said, I told her, yeah, I do. And that really wasn't a lie. I have to be here. I have to slow into this work. Amen. So yeah, Ma, I got to be here. You, do, are y'all seeing the difference? Yes. The vision. The vision. People do what they want to do, and I've learned to laugh. Bishop, not going. You don't want to work this, don't work. There will come a time when every knee shall bow. Right. And every time we'll confess that he is Lord. Right. And you wish you had to work this vision. Amen. It's for an appointed time. It's going to happen. Amen. God is not a man that he would love. Sister Brown comes to every Monday night, every Friday. Missionary, every Monday, 
every Friday. Amen. And she gets off work, but she's getting into a rehearsal. She's over there. They're over there doing the important background work that nobody sees of a calendar. Amen. That's one of those I can play the background departments. Stripping and waxing floors. I can play the background. Cleaning the toilets. I can play the background. Getting the food out every Thursday night. I can play the background to give away. Sewing into a vision that will go from this to this. Stand to your Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And take on the spirit of your leaders. If people don't want to do it, those of you that are working in ministry, always look at Mother Willis. Dialysis three times a week. But she here on Thursday. Here on Sunday. And if she, when her family was bringing they were they bringing her sheep. I could tell her eyes was on fire when she come in the door. That's sewing. Amen. You understand that? That's sewing. Amen. She's being faithful. She's being faithful Amen. and consistent. Amen. Faithful Amen. and paying her time. Amen. What are you doing to sew into the this? What are you doing to bring God's revelation to pass? Hallelujah. 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 Were you not blessed by that word on tonight? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It might not have made you run up and down and it wasn't a hooping sermon, hallelujah, but it blessed us, hallelujah. Yes. hallelujah. I hope you uh, received it, got some insight yes. on how to work the vision. Yes. Hallelujah, before we work the vision, we got to prime our pump, though. We got to get ready. Yes. We got to get ready. Yes. Hallelujah, so we bless God for that. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, salvation, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, right now, we're asking our internet audience, if you need prayer, hallelujah, our prayer warriors are standing by right now. Please call us at 804-232-0491. Call us at 804-232-7180. Amen. Call us at 804-232-2490. Amen. Our prayer warriors are adding the lines right now. We're waiting on you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Do not lose this opportunity. Hallelujah. Do not Thank neglect this opportunity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now, we're going to get into our tithes and offering. Can someone get excited about the opportunity to be there? Hallelujah. 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 We'll get a little background. Background. Y'all supposed to have been ready. Hallelujah. We're live streaming. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. cliche that's really powerful. How many have experienced that? As soon as you feel like you're getting ahead, it's just one thing after another. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. But the difference is, see, it's, it's two angles you can look at it. Amen. You're either Amen. on this side, if it's one thing or another, or you're on this side. This is the spiritual side. That's this is the worldly side. I'd rather be on this side where God makes provision for that one thing. Right. 
or another, or I, or I don't want to be on this side and have to figure it out for myself. Hallelujah. And that's where your tithes and your offerings come in at. Right. Hallelujah. That's good. That's, that's where good. your tithes and your offerings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want to see if you are faithful and you are consistent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, tithers. Hallelujah. And I have uh, Brother Shelton's uh, tithes here to leave out, pick up his wife, but I have his. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on down. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That's, that's much better. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We don't want to. We don't want to lose our spot. And kingdomship and lose our benefits. Amen. Hallelujah. That's good. To a technicality or an excuse why we can't be consistent Amen. in our Amen. giving. Amen. Because at the end of the day, God's not looking for an excuse. He knew that struggles was going to come. He knew that hardships was going to come. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He's looking for consistency. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He wants you to weather the storm and be faithful. Hallelujah. I don't want to be reminded on that day when I'm asking them for something, I'm in need for something. Where you remember when you when you were supposed to do this, when you were supposed to sow. I don't, I don't want to be reminded of that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know we got four easy ways. Hallelujah. No excuse in this building. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Mobile online kiosk and text. Your choice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. No childers uh, this evening? No childers. All right. So let's get ready for our... What? Why general offering? Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's get ready for our general offering. We do have time. Oh, come on up. Come on up. Come on up, says Blackwell. I thought I had gave the invitation to come on up. I apologize. The scripture up. Hallelujah. Will a man rob God? Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, you have robbed me. For ye say, Where in have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with the curse. For ye have robbed me. Even the whole nation. Bring me all the tithes into the storehouse. That there may be meat in my house. And prove me now. Here it is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we ready? Hallelujah. Rise to your feet. 
to your feet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Happening. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, say thank God. 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 Thank Hallelujah. God. Love and hug your neighbor.